Cordell Stewart. This ain't gay though. Divorce. This ain't no, gay. This, we getting ready to get into some tra- tra- traditional what? marriages. Traditional okay. marriages. <laughs> they, you know, they, they had a source that said, uh, they kept asking him, oh, how's everything going? And he said, man, it's a wrap. It's a wrap, and what they kept saying that? that you know they thought he was talking about the show. Kept saying that. Yeah, they thought he was talking about this season's uh, Real Housewives of oh, Atlanta. Oh, okay. He was talking about the marriage. He was mm. like, "It's a wrap. <laughs> <laughs> it's over with. <laughs> Ball game." The man giving up on his marriage already. What happened? Did she, uh, you know, do man, some I, adultery man, stuff? Man, my on auntie her? used to always tell me. She used to say, "Whenever you get married, you make sure your wife don't have no single friends." That's it. And I you know ain't blaming what? them, but man, I watched that show and they used to, even if the woman wasn't listening to him, I could just imagine what was going in her mind. Yeah, mind, mind oh. and I'm not going away. So keep on getting your Listen to this clip, the Today Show, and they was talking about Cordell filing for divorce. Okay. And former NFL star Cordell Stewart has dropped a major behind-the-scenes bombshell by filing for divorce. <gasps> I know. <laughs> ABC's Diana Perez has the details. Oh, my goodness. Cordell loves to dress me. I'm his Barbie doll. She's the quintessential Georgia peach and a budding philanthropist. He's a gridiron great. A former Pittsburgh Steelers quarterback. Together, Portia and Cordell Stewart were one of Hotlanta's hottest couples until their love seemed to go cold with nearly 4 million viewers watching. I'm just disgusted. Why y'all can't act right? The tension had certainly played out between Cordell and Portia, her wanting to maintain a career and Cordell maintaining that she should either be a mother or choose a career, but not have both. I'm not trying to sound like your daddy, but this is just what I want. Even fellow castmates noticed trouble in paradise. I guess Papa Cordell didn't sign Portia's permission slip to go on the field trip. Mm-hmm. You know, and I saw those episodes. Dude, this show killed that marriage. Because I watched it a few times to analyze it or whatever, and Cordell's, Cordell was the only person on that show that had any sense. Everybody else... It's called Real Housewives of Atlanta. You got, what, five, six women, ain't but two of them wives. So you telling me talking killed a marriage? Because they all in her all in her business. They saying things like, you heard that permission slip comment. Yeah. Uh, stuff like, oh, he's not letting her. One of the, where it started really blowing up, all the women went to Vegas, and they went to a strip club. Mm. Roger said he didn't want me in the strip club. I was like, well, I don't think they're wrong with going to the strip club. It ain't no sin to go to the strip club. You know, I was just being rebellious. You know, it's a bad decision. And she didn't yeah. go with him because okay. she said, you know, that was disrespectful to her marriage. Mm-hmm. He didn't tell her that she couldn't go. She just saw that, hey, you know, I respect what I got. I don't want to go in there. Mm-hmm. And then, oh, you're letting him control you. What are you supposed to do? What's she supposed to do? And that was the only marriage that was like a normal marriage. Well, you know, what? I was speaking of marriage. I was married 27 years. Uh, the first time I was married, because I got married again. With that, that, that marriage broke up, not because of my wife, but because of me. But the second time I got married, it, this is funny, because I was only married eight months. I felt like I was married to Kim Kardashian <laughs> <laughs> when, I, when, I, when that marriage broke up, man. How long it lasts? Eight months. Eight months. So, I yeah. mean, at least I thought I was Chris <laughs> Humphreys. <laughs> you doubled Kim's record. She was, what, three months? I think hers was three months, so I doubled her record. But my point is, what I want to make is we have this mindset, mindset set encouraged by the media. Once again, they're encouraging this that you being happy is more important than sacrifice. And sacrifice is what it takes. It's the main ingredient in marriage. Yeah, that's heavy. Well, well, now Cordell, this is, I'm going to name him, he used to be called a slash. Mm-hmm. Now he's Cordell slash divorced. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm, I'm glad he filed for divorce. Mm-hmm. You know why? Why? Because I don't mess with married men. Get that man my number, cause <laughs> <laughs> he, he all right with You me. like him, <laughs> Pittsburgh? So you like the Steelers? What? Wow, what? Cordell. Now you, you know, y'all down. know me. I got to tie it into the media. Yeah, right? t- yeah. And the reason why I'm tied into the media be- is because I seen him on the show a few times, and he was getting a little controlling. But you know, that's his relationship. She might like that or not. You never know what people got going on inside of a, inside of a marriage. Mm-hmm. But I do know this: mm-hmm. marriage has been affected since the fifties. Okay, Okay, in the 50s and the 60s, when they start putting these fake images 
of their lives with Leave It to Beaver. Oh, yeah. Is that you, Beaver? Yes, Mom. Oh, Beaver, I see you're home. Yes, Dad. This is me that's home. <laughs> How was the movie? Well, I didn't go to the movie. You didn't go to the movie? No, sir. I went yesterday when I wasn't supposed to. Oh, is that so? Yes, sir. And I won a racing bicycle with a guaranteed leather seat. And I hit it at Larry's. And I was going to make believe like I won it today. But I couldn't. So that's why I'm telling you what happened. Bullshit! 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 Father Knows Best. Oh, man. They on into the 60s and 70s with the Brady Bunch. Mm -hmm. They always had the wife nice and petite and sweet and, sweet and innocent. <laughs> and they made her look happy at home, cooking, cooking and cleaning, cleaning and, you know, just catering to her man and her family and mm -hmm. everything, right? Mm -hmm. On into the 80s, if you notice, they started changing that. The, they okay. started changing. They started putting married women who wanted power. Mm -hmm. See, they made the women who want to stay at home look happy okay. and joyful. But the women who wanted power and wanted to wanted more out of life than just to be sitting at home washing dishes, they made them look crazy. Oh, yeah, they did. Uh, nagging. Mm -hmm. You go watch Dynasty. Oh, go watch Dallas. Dallas. Those women were out of their minds. They were. So it was like the media was, was shaping and stereotyping women. Okay, if you stay at home, you could be happy. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't affecting the women. You know who it affected more? Who? The men watching. Because that's what they wanted. They they wanted Greg, Bra uh, the Brady Bunch yeah, life. Yeah, because I have sisters always asking me all the time, why do men want those women they can control? Why do they want women like that? Why do they want an independent woman? They always And I try to explain to them, not all men, but no. but just like the media affected white people thinking black people crimes, it mm -hmm. affects you subconsciously. Mm -hmm. right. So a man don't even realize it that, He's been taught and conditioned to want that type of woman. Dang. So he has to fight that. You know, now it's a little bit different because the media has slowly been changing that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's a process. Oh, and man. maybe Cordell didn't understand that because you can't control a woman. No way. Ain't no way in the world you're going to control a woman. <laughs> She going to do what she want to do. She going to do. Hey, <laughs> if you get to that point where she doing what she want to do, you got two choices. What's that? Either accept it uh -huh. or get the hell on like Cordell did. <laughs> like, <laughs> so he made the right choice. Cordell slash divorce. You know, because her friends was on there. I couldn't believe. But I knew that was going to happen. Mm. I also thought it was a setup, too. I said to myself, this can't be possible the way he talking to this sister. Because mm -hmm. if you think about it, she was that docile black woman, which mm -hmm. we rarely see. Mm -hmm. That was happy, make one thinking about her man first. She wasn't even into her girlfriend. She was all that happy woman. And then now she got a divorce. So now this is what I'm waiting to see. Okay, on the show. Right. Because uh -huh. this goes back to Waiting to Exhale, oh, all the oh, Tyler man. Perry movies. She burnt his clothes up too? Not yet. Oh, group. She ain't burnt Not his yet. house up. Here's what I'm waiting to see. Okay. Are they going to now give her that stereotypical sister attitude? You know she gets so that. Now, so what they want to say is, see, sisters got an excuse to act the way they act. Mm -hmm. Actually, the I, what I'm what I'm wondering if, if they're going to start showing he may be out with his publicist or, or his agent or something, mm -hmm. and they start spinning it like he's looking at white women now. Uh-oh. Wow, here they come. And, and, uh -oh. They coming. You know, it's... Black people just can't get along, huh? <laughs> just can't get along. <laughs> chocolate gotta, people, too. Gotta intervene. Wow. Man, that's amazing. How that's, they and they, it's all on the slide, and people say, man, y'all just paranoid. Y'all just... Did. Folks, if, if it wasn't there, we wouldn't see it. Thank you. Thank the you, reason nerd. why we talk about it is because we see it over and over. That's it. You know? <laughs> it's a pattern. <laughs> it's a pattern that you can't even see. Matter of fact, Matt, we got someone coming in, right? There you go. That, He's just... going to explain it to you. Right. The most powerful man in the media. We're going to get him on the phone. We're going to take a little break, mm -hmm. and then we're going to get him on the phone. Okay. okay we'll be right back, y'all. Right. All right. right. All right, folks, we're back. Now we're going to see if we can get Mr. Uh, Source on the phone. Yeah, that's a, yeah. The most powerful man in the media. Who, who, he was head of the stereotypical division. Man, he ran that. Yeah, of Hollywood. Let's see if we can get him. Hello? 
Hello, Mr. Source. Oh, uh, yeah. Who is oh, this calling me? This is uh, yams.org. We uh, had you previously on the show, and we, we were supposed to have you at least, you know, once a week. But we took a, a week off or whatever, two Man, weeks. Man, do you know where I work at? Where do you work at? I work in Hollywood. You know what we do in Hollywood? What? We lie. Oh, okay. So that's good. So I lied to you. Oh, you lied? Can you handle the lie? <laughs> yes. I can handle the truth. You can't handle the truth. I don't think you can. Okay. But, <laughs> Mr. Sewell, for, for, we're glad to have you back. Our audience, you know, uh, enjoys you. The one time they, we got a lot of emails, you know, coming from them asking more questions. And so we decided to call you again and thank God you was uh, available. Yeah, I see that you guys changed your format. You got a woman on there. Who does she think she is? A low rent Oprah? <laughs> yes. Well, you might want to meet her. I didn't get a job. You might want to meet her. I don't want to meet her. Didn't you, didn't you do Oprah? I mean. Ain't... I created it all. Oh, okay. That's what I. Did I you mean... like Oprah? Did Oprah make black young black men look good? <laughs> yeah, I think. Did she create any black doctors? Uh, is no. there? She made Doctor Phil. She made Doctor Phil. Okay, okay. She made Doctor Oz. She had Ben Carson. Did you got Doctor Bubble. She had. <laughs> no, we don't have. Did Ben Carson get his own show? No, he never did. <laughs> okay. No. As a matter of fact, they. But my what I my, what I'm trying to get to some. We got a couple of questions that we want to ask you. One of them is this: Is there a method to a story going national when the crime is committed by a black person? Are you a, reading that? Yeah, I'm reading this, you know, because it's a question. Okay. It came in from a uh, okay. from one of our listeners. So Get to your point, sir. Okay. <laughs> Even if a black person is a part of the crime, like the Ohio rape case, you know, they was just having fun. Okay, the girl got drunk, but once the black guy put his finger in the fun, then it became a rape case. So I just wanted to ask you, what do you feel? How does that take place? How, how does all that Take place so in- basically you're asking me, how do we decide which stories we're going to pick? Right. Right. Because you black people have the highest crime rate. So you say we do, right? Or- well, you do. Oh. However, most crimes are committed by other people. But okay. you have a high crime rate. Mm-hmm. So once we get to the crime scene, we have to decide, is okay. this story worth going national? Okay. And what we sometimes we come to the conclusion that if it's black, mm-hmm. it's always going national. And I'm going to tell you why, young okay. man. Because in our surveys, what we found out, mm-hmm. black crime gets higher ratings. Oh, on the television. Yes. White people don't want to see themselves as criminals. <laughs> right, okay. Anybody, you don't like seeing black people as I criminals, sure do don't. you? I I get, I get the quivers. Where there's more white people, so we're going to make you the criminals. Oh, okay. Did you understand that? Yeah, I think I got that. Okay. I think I got that. Any more questions? Yeah, we got one more question. <laughs> do you have, you don't have any, do you, Essence? I had them, but come on, I you broke didn't. Oprah. <laughs> she broke just because just she sound broke. Me a job. <laughs> I, my question it has to do with something like the one he just asked with the picking a, a side. Is that the way you do your stand your ground cases? Right, because right. well, what I'm saying is, you know, stand your ground with with Zimmerman. He was the white guy taking it, and it blew up. Mm-hmm. And then you had other cases that came back behind that where black people took that law, and and it went under the table. So how well, come they Well, basically, out there? you know, I'm an extension of the wealthy. That's who I work for. Okay. And the whole purpose of the wealthy is to stay in power. Period. And the reason they want to stay in power is because power is good. Oh, it's okay. And the easiest way to stay in power is to conquer and divide. Okay. So when we see a case, mm-hmm. the first thought we have in our process is this. Mm-hmm. How can we divide the people? Mm-hmm. I heard earlier in your show you mentioned the Texas man being drugged in Texas. Right. We made that a national story. Sure did. Yes, we did, because we knew it would divide the people. Do you know just two months after that, two skinheads had saved the old black couple in a burning car at a stop sign? I didn't know that. Yes, we did that. That didn't go national. We didn't want it to go national because it would have brought the people together, you fool. <laughs> That's how that works, huh? How else couldn't we stand power if we don't keep you divided, knucklehead? Oh, man. Well, I thought you could use military force to stay in power. That's but how most dictators do. That's what we do with, around the world. But you in America, we can't just go around and, well, okay. we are bringing our drones later, but we're not going to get into that. <laughs> Oops. Well, you always I had to, I think the drone's been here for a while. Well, you won't tell me that. I'll give you a little more insight on that later. Okay. So- 